Samantha Kuhn, Jen Moynihan Wynn, Maureen Van Dorn, Lauren Hawkins, Jen Pulliam, Rebecca Rudin, Selena Roll, Jackie Cole, and Cantina Ina. And when we're not closing down the park at Oga's, we're going geeky. Disney World Geeks, Curtis Stone here, and welcome to episode 453 of the Geek and Non Walt Disney World podcast. This week on the podcast, Jamie Givens sails out of Port Canaveral on the Disney Dream. Yeah, Disney Cruise Line is sailing, and I've been having fun chatting with Disney World fans and geeks like Jamie for over eight years. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. I started the podcast with my daughter Lindsay talking about our Disney World trips. And then we brought on you Disney geeks to tell your trip stories. Our listeners are so positive, caring, generous, and having lots of fun closing down Hollywood Studios after Ogas. That was an awesome intro. Thanks, guys. They are experienced Disney geeks, and you'll get lots of ideas and tips for your next trip to Disney World from their real-world experiences and trip reports. And we encourage a family atmosphere here on the podcast. Before too long, they were calling me the podfather, and we'd love for you to join our geek and family. We've got an amazing private discussion group in Facebook. Search for Geekin' on WDW Family. It's a great place to ask your questions, share your trip pictures, and engage with one of the best Disney groups out there, out on the internet. And we're independent Disney authorized travel agents with Fairytale Concierge. Fairy Tale Concierge is an authorized Platinum Disney travel agency. We'd love to be your travel guides and help you book your room, tickets, and dining reservations. You'll notice many of our guests on the podcast book their trips, and they also transfer their trip bookings. Those one they make themselves over to the Traveling Tierras. That's Mama, Auntie Judy, and the Traveling Tierras. Email them at travelintierras at gmail.com. Just check the show notes and you'll see their email as well as mine. If you'd like to reach out to us, the app that you're listening to the show probably has the show notes right there and also on our website, geekinonww.com. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, Mom. Margie and I were out visiting our moms this weekend and all our kids were home to say hello to their mom. And I hope you spent some great family time this weekend. Well, Jamie is a mom to one of my favorite little guys, one of my pals that I've met many times in the parks, James. And they went on their very first cruise, the Disney Dream, four nights. They also did one night at the Polynesian. She reviews the ship's quarters, pools, quick service food options. They also did the Merritt Island Pancake House before the cruise which was something she heard on the podcast. We did this a few years ago, and we spent a lot of time talking about food. Palo, which is one of their signature restaurants on the ship, she explains the rotational dining, even some of the food in the parks like Magic Kingdom treats, Skipper Canteen, cheese bread that we rave about, Flower and Garden. She does lots of booths, big time, lounges on the ship. They also did some Nassau and pirate. Excur- they did a pirate excursion in a show. Got to go a little bit on Castaway Key, and then she finishes up with some fond memories and tips and a little bonus chat about scavenger hunts. I mean, Jamie really went into excruciating detail in this podcast. I want to tell you, my guests that come on this podcast are really prepared, and Jamie just did a really great job going into deep details. She must have taken some great notes like every day. I got to ask her how she did it. And If you want to come on the show and do a, a trip report, boy, take some notes from what Jamie did. She did a fantastic job, and I hope all you moms and everyone else enjoy this week geeking on Walt Disney World. All right, my guest on this show, she's been on several times before. She's one of my favorite geekin' family members, and 
She's got one of the cutest geeking kids that we got in the group. They're all cute <laughs> for sure. But, and they do some intros for us every once in a while. I was so excited. I didn't realize she was back in the parks and did a cruise. And I was like, wow, this is so exciting to see someone in our community going on a cruise. So I got to get the story from her. So please give a warm geek and family welcome to Jamie Gibbons. Hi, Kurt. Hi, geeks. And welcome back, Jamie. Thanks. It's good. Sorry. Good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> good to be back in the park so soon, right? And, and a cruise. This is exciting. Absolutely. We're we're blessed to live close so we can get down to Florida a little easier than some of our friends up north. So we, we yeah. take advantage of it as much as we can. Boy, Margita's telling me just today, and we had some listeners heading down this past week, and I know specifically with Southwest Airlines is having some problems. And she was telling me how they canceled our flight for june and but then she was excited she was telling me they set it up for eight o'clock at night so i ended up i'm I actually get a full day in the park but yeah there's a lot of well your husband flies too right he does we have a we have a plane but he's been working on it he bought a bought a bought one from actually went up to new york to get it um about a year ago and they've kind of been working on things to get it back into order because it was in a hangar for a long time and not able to fly mm -hmm. so They've been working on it, and hopefully by the end of this year, we'll be able to fly in that. But it's it's only about five hours driving, so it's not too t too bad for a for a road trip either. But he would always prefer to get to fly. <laughs> well, I have a fun way of having everyone in the community get to know you, Jamie, a little bit. We got some fun Walt Disney World facts about yourself. What's your first one? Well, I'm James's mom, and uh, James's big buddies are Kurt and Samantha, I think, and, and all the geeks. And I actually, I think I have a little story. I don't know if I can go ahead and tell it, but yeah. we rode the people mover on this trip, and he said, I love the people mover. And I said, well, you're really a geek then. And he said, really? I'm a geek? And I said, absolutely. So he was very excited about that. But <laughs> He's so much fun to go on rides with. I was just saying, I'm disappointed. Down at G3, I know you did one of our roundtables, but I was thinking, I didn't see you and James and your husband, like, hardly at all this past trip. So, I, was, I felt like I'd seen yeah. every, you know, had some real quality time with a lot of people. And I was like, wow, how did I miss not riding a ride with James? Yeah, I hate we didn't get to stay longer, and hopefully the next time we can we can take more time to be there. But it was kind of his first year of school this year. He started mm -hmm. in the public school system. and we were taking another little trip where we had taken him out of school a day later in the month and we just hated to take him out. Um, we mm. should have, we should have just done it. But anyway, <laughs> we, we, we enjoyed being there longer the previous year and hopefully in the future we can be there longer too and get to participate more. Fantastic. Yeah. I love, you know, they grow up so fast. I was just saying how my son, my firstborn has been texting me. He's actually starting a podcast and he's, yeah, actually, there was an album that was just released that he was telling me about and giving me tips on going to listen to. We like music together, too. So, But he's 30. Oh. <laughs> I can't, it's crazy. Hard to remember when he was five. Uh, <laughs> Those are cute times, though. Cute times. <laughs> for sure. All right, give me another fun fact about yourself. Well, we love looking for hidden Mickeys, um, mostly at home. And if I ever see one, I try to take a picture of it and show James. I mean, sometimes I find one on a tree or saw one in artwork at a hotel I was at and mm. just all different times we can kind of find hidden Mickey's James loves to point them out to me too. So that's just kind of become a thing. Byron, my husband said, you, you know, I've really created a monster, but uh, we enjoy doing it together. So it's, yeah. it's fun. It's cool. You're turning them into a, a Disney geek and I'm <laughs> nothing wrong with that. That's right. <laughs> one more fun fact. It's, it's never a real trip to me if I don't get to see Donald Duck. So I always love to get uh -huh. to see Donald Duck in the parks. I honestly don't know if I actually saw him in the parks when we were there at the end of our trip, but I did get to see him on the cruise ship. So that was that was yeah. a lot of fun. What was he dressed up like on the cruise ship? Well, he's a sailor. Duh. 
Right. <laughs> they, I think we saw him, I think, in his regular sailor outfit, but they did have costumes. We didn't, honestly, we didn't do as many characters as we could have on this trip, but mm-hmm. like Pirate Night, they each had their little pirate costumes on. I know I've seen pictures and he had kind of a straw hat that looked like it washed up on the beach. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah, I always cute. try to get to make sure I get to see him. <laughs> He's so cute. What's your favorite outfit for Donald? <laughs> I mean, I love the Mexican Donald, there yeah, you the go. Mexican outfit. So, <laughs> yeah, and I haven't gone to see him since he's reopened. So, or since oh, no? he started okay. having his meets yet, but yeah. Were they allowing? Could you hug Donald on the ship? No, yeah. no. I think we just missed that. Okay. It's sad because I have a friend that's been wanting to go. To, she's at Disney World actually right now, and she had been waiting to take her daughter and was so disappointed. You know, she was very excited, but disappointed that the, that the hugs and the autographs mm. weren't going to be starting back up, you know. So, hey, we just missed it on the cruise ship All for right. sure. But Well, this is exciting to hear people going on the cruise. So tell me, I'm not, of course, I've. I don't know that when or ever I'll go because my wife is afraid of the water. She's got one of those phobias of the water. And so I have to learn from you guys. And tell me all about which uh, boat did you ride on? We were on the Disney Dream and it was out of Port Canaveral. And that was, this is our first Disney cruise. It was James's first cruise. Oh, okay. We've been on some other cruise lines before, but uh, I, everything I had heard about Disney cruises, I just really wanted to try out a Disney cruise. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of special features that they have. And of course, just the Disney magic you know, that you get just being on the ship. So, Yeah, one of the things I like to ask too, because thinking of this whole trip, your must-dos and things that you were really looking forward to, things that you were planning, what, what was kind of your mindset going in on this cruise and... You stayed, did you say, at the Polynesian, right? Yeah, we stayed We stayed one night at the Polynesian. We had some DVC points that we were going to lose if we didn't use them before the end of our year, each year. So we I actually, I can't remember, it was, it was after, not too long ago, I was able to snag the room there one time when I was looking like late at night and I found uh, one night there. So we grabbed that. But um, our goal, my goal for the trip was definitely just re- to relax you know, a lot of times you go to the parks and it's just go, go, go. And I had actually, we had initially booked the, the cruise uh, with Jen Galambos back before COVID started. And, and we, this wasn't really like a reschedule. We eventually canceled the cruise altogether, but um, we ended up deciding that we wanted to cruise again uh, within about the last year we decided to do this trip. So um, nice. I just wanted to get to relax and get, get some of the Disney magic as well. And then when we went to the parks, we really, our main goal was to ride the Seven Dwarf Mine Train because that's James's absolute favorite ride. And so I knew we were going to have to do that. And then we kind of weren't planning on going to the parks on Saturday before we drove home. But then with all the flower and garden stuff, I just can't resist like (laughs) taking a trip into Epcot and trying some food. So we got to do that too. So that worked out well. (laughs) How many nights out to sea were you? We were four nights on the ship. Yep, it was it was great. Tell me about your room on the ship. So this was our first time getting a room with like a veranda or balcony. So it was a, like a family stateroom. They the room that we had had a queen bed and then it had a couch that folded down into basically like a twin size mattress. Some of the rooms that are family staterooms also have a bunk bed that comes down from the ceiling as well. We really loved like having the balcony and getting to have room service and and you could place you write in on a little card the night before like what they have like little check boxes of what you want so if you want coffee or bagels or toast or cereal james always likes hot chocolate so we ordered some of that too and so getting to use that balcony was was really great fantastic what kind of so they're all different levels like they have at disney world so you have like your basic model we're kind of we're, we're this kind of land with the verandas was it the highest end or mid-range or well probably probably mid-range because there's concierge on disney cruises just like there is at some of the you know the resorts yeah. too and those rooms uh i watched some blogs to prepare for the trip and there's some really enormous suites that you can be in but <laughs> this was basically kind of like a i would say like a mid you know they do have uh rooms that are interior uh, they have rooms that just have like a porthole where you don't have the balcony and then they have 
the the balcony. And then I think you go up kind of from that with like the suites and stuff like that. So it was, it was, it was great though. I don't think we'll ever be able to go back to not having the, the veranda on the All room. All <laughs> right. Plenty of space for you, for the three of you. It was enough space. Kind of one thing I noticed when we went to Polynesian, I was like, this room is huge, which, you know, the rooms at Polynesian are big, but any room would seem a lot bigger after you get off of a cruise ship <laughs> because think, it's yeah. a little bit, you know, more, more tight. I mean, it's tighter than like a value resort, um, but it's, it's, the space is maintained well. I mean, it's, they have the under the bed storage. They yeah. have a lot of little cabinets and cubbies that you can put things in. It was nice because they had two bathrooms and Disney's one of the, I don't know if any other cruise line has bathtubs in their like regular rooms. Um, Usually it's just like a really tiny shower and toilet and sink all together in one little space, but having it split up like that, it it allowed it to feel a little more uh, room in the, in the bathroom as Mm. well. So that was, that worked out well too. Excellent. So kids love pools, don't they, Jamie? Oh, yes. So James said that was the most important thing that I had to talk about was the pools at the, at the, on the ship. So <laughs> on the main deck, they had two pools that you could swim in. They had one that was called Donald's Pool. It was kind of shaped like a duck foot. And then they had uh, a Mickey pool that was shaped like Mickey's head. And they had a couple other pools. They had a little s- smaller pool up on a higher deck, kind of at the front by the funnel. And then they also had a pool in the adults only area as well. So, but the main area kind of was between the two funnels was kind of like the family, you know, family, kid friendly area that Mm -hmm. everybody could be in. And so that's where those two pools were. And James spent a lot of time in those two pools. (laughs) (laughs) Why not? Yeah. (laughs) Right. Right. It's amazing. Pools on a boat. (laughs) Right. Right. He couldn't really imagine that before, but, but yeah. Water in the water. Nice. (laughs) <laughs> splash areas too yes they had a um finding nemo splash pad area and it was nice because it was covered i work in dermatology so like it's being protected from the sun yeah. you know even on a fun beach vacation is important to me so that was neat uh they have a mr ray slide in that area a waterfall kind of thing like a wall of rainwater i guess almost like that the you could the kids could go through and then different little spouts on the ground and between the fish and everything on in that area so james enjoyed playing in there too that area i mean james some some people i think i know the austins were talking about cruises and the nemo area for kids that aren't potty trained or in like swim diapers they can still go in there but the pools like on the cruise ship kids that you know swim diapers and stuff are not allowed. Kids have to be potty trained to be on on those areas. So that's kind of something, one thing that we considered as we were thinking about cruises, even when he was younger is, you know, is, you know, wanting to, to be able to do as much as we could on the ship, you know, with him. So just a parenting fact. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I would have loved those as a kid. I loved the pool, but these splash areas, Disney, even at the resorts are, they built a lot of them, right, Jamie? They're fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. James always loves to check the splash pad areas out. Is He makes friends, doesn't he, wherever he goes? Oh, he He's does pretty social, for sure. Right? He does. He does. He <laughs> he actually, they have um, drink stations on the pool deck where you could go up and Disney has, everybody gets soft drinks are kind of included with your trip which that's something that a lot of cruise lines you have to pay extra for soft drinks you get water and tea and coffee and and things like that for free but the soft drinks aren't included so they didn't have they did have it where adults could go up and fill their own cup they had somebody that was there kind of monitoring it but for the kids you know they had somebody there that could fill the drink up for them and so james would go up there there was some girls that he met at the pool (laughs) that were a little bit older than him. And he, um, he went, he came up to our, we had, we were sitting at the chairs and he had run off and we kind of let him do his own thing a little bit because it was right there. We could kind of mm-hmm. see him most of the time. And yep. he um, came back and had two cups of hot chocolate. And he said, I'm going to give one of these to my friend that I met. So <laughs> he went over there and, and, and did that. That was kind of a funny, funny, sweet moment, you know, and yeah. two, two sisters that he was hanging out with. So, <laughs> <laughs> little uh, kids on the on the boat um it was a good number of children he did also really enjoy the kids club that they had there there were adults only areas which were nice to be able to get away so 
I mean, I think Byron made the comment one day where he was like, this would be a totally different trip if you didn't bring kids because you could really stay away from the kids as much as you wanted to if you you know, mm. wanted to be an adult on a Disney, Disney cruise. The dining room, you're probably going to see kids, the regular dining rooms, but um, they do have specialty dining and things like that too as well that you can, can mm-hmm. get away from, from the little ones if you want to, but so it was, it was good, for, good for him. <laughs> they got like a water park on this thing, right? The aqueduct, isn't that? Right. So that was, that was pretty cool. That was the, they kind I think they say it's like a water coaster and they even had, I wish I could remember the whole thing that they had as you climb up into the funnel to, to go down, to start going down the slide. They had like a whole little story about Huey, Dewey and Louie creating the slide and that Donald thought he could really fly, but he became an aqueduct and there's, like a Donald Duck booty on the outside of the funnel, kind of like, you know, you see in Phil Her Magic, you know, in the back where, where mm. he's flown into the wall. Yeah. Sadly, I thought James was going to be tall enough for that. And we got up there and he was not. So he was a little disappointed when he found that out. But mm. Byron and I did get to ride that. You do have, it's either two or one person per, um, per tube. And you have to be at least 42 inches to ride it. And then, a little bit taller. I don't know. I can't remember how tall to be on it by yourself. And so, but they did have another Mickey slide. And so that was good. And James absolutely loved that. That one had a maximum height because they didn't want any adults on it really probably or kids that were too tall. And that was a little yellow spiral slide that he went up, you know, went on a million times too. So (laughs) James also mentioned that this was very important for you to bring up. So congrats. Right. Right. Well done, Jamie. (laughs) Right. Good job. <laughs> good job. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, yeah. I, I remember my parents taking us to a water park, and there weren't very many when I was a kid, but they had one in uh, Rhode Island, um, Mesquamica Beach, in that area. It was about, does it take us like two hours to get there, I think? But boy, when I ever discovered that water park, I was, man, that was my thing. I loved them. Mm-hmm. I, I can kind of, they beat me up now, but <laughs> back then I loved them too. That's awesome. Fantastic. How, all right. Let's say, uh, well, usually we, we talk about the quick service food, I guess. Does that qualify yeah. in this? So I tried to think like what would qualify as quick service food. And I was, I was telling, talking to my husband Byron about it. And he was like, that's not really quick service. And I said, well, for the ship, I think it is. So, on the pool deck, they had this Flo's Cafe, and they had, so it was Cars movie theme, but really it wasn't like, a, it was an open air to the pool area where they had a Luigi's Pizza counter, mm-hmm. and then a Tomater's Grill counter, and then a Fillmore's Favorites counter. Yeah. And so the Luigi's Pizza was obviously pizza, and they had like cheese pepperoni, I think like a meat pizza, one that was like a special, that changed out each day. The Tomaters Grill uh, had really good burgers and fries. Byron said to point that out, that the burgers were really good on the ship. <laughs> Not surprised. And then the Fillmore's <laughs> Favorites, if you wanted to do like, you know, some, a healthier choice, then they had wraps and sandwiches and salads and fruit bowls available too. And so these these three areas were open, you know, almost all the time during the day. So the Cabanas, the buffet area would only be open certain hours. And then they'd have dining times in the main dining rooms. But these areas were open more during the daytime where you could could get food kind of any more any time-ish. Is so. everything an all-inclusive package, including the food? I know booze is not included, right? Right. The so Yeah, alcohol is not included. They do have so, – so all of these food areas are included. They do have some priced food places. So there's Vanellope's Sweets that has specialty ice creams like gelatos. There was a Frozone area where they did like smoothies and things like that. And then there's a couple specialty dining places. There's Palo and uh, Remy's. Mm. And those are those are extra cost. I'm trying to think about another. There was a, and then they had a Cove Cafe too where they did like specialty coffees and, and drinks as well. But that was also extra cost. But the majority of the food you could definitely get by with, with just eating, you know, what was already paid for with your pricing with the cruise. So. Well, let's get into the food. You know, I love it's one of my favorite attractions on a Disney right. vacation. <laughs> so, 
I right. love this one. <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember when you mentioned this. Did you message me or something about this next one? I forget. I think I messaged on the post because I was trying to listen to it again to see what y'all had eaten so we could try to try the same things. But yeah. I know on your January 2020 trip, you went down to try to watch a rocket launch or something, right? With That's the right. Castros. Yeah. Cape, yeah. So our good friends, the Castros, live in Merritt Island, which is right near Cape Canaveral. And it was a SpaceX launch that didn't launch. I, they had trouble. I think two days in a row with weather ended up being, we got all the way down there and Claudia gave us the news. Well, we'll have to find mm -hmm. something else to do, which ended up being pretty cool. This discovery of the Merritt right. Island Pancake House, which right. we so, loved. We were like amazed. Yeah, yeah. it was very good. Um, I remember you talking about it and I looked it up and I saved it because I have like trip advisor account where I can save different things. Like you can save things to a trip that you want to do. And so oh, cool. um, I had, I had saved it and that was part of the plan of going down the night earlier was that I wanted to try this, this place out. Mm. Um, the, um, I kind of had my eyes were bigger than my stomach, I guess, with what I got. <laughs> so they had, <laughs> they that had is... Elvis, <laughs> that's not hard to do with this place right jamie right right great it's big portions. huge portions yeah. yes they had something that was called the elvis pancakes and it was <laughs> banana pancakes topped with like a warm english custard and then it had peanut butter crumble like kind of crispy peanut butter crumble <laughs> sprinkles on it yeah. and then a banana and reese's syrup so i mean i should have known that wasn't the best idea to try right before i got on a cruise ship and had all the food i wanted to eat but yeah. it just sounded too good not to be able to try so yeah, it, um, it was super decadent the uh custard was very creamy and absolutely delicious the pancakes that they do are so thick they're uh -huh. literally like cakes <laughs> But there was no way I could have eaten. I mean, that would be something you should definitely share. It was like a dessert. <laughs> so um, it was tasty, though. I'm glad I tried it. And I would still want to go back there and try something else. But um, you, you it didn't was, clean your it plate? too much. Absolutely not. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine. Shame, shame, I would have shame. been like, ooh, yeah. Well, and then getting on the cruise ship and starting to move. I mean, I don't really get much in sick, but, you know, I thought yeah. if I'm <laughs> Super full. This is not gonna be so you, <laughs> not gonna you, be good. You did breakfast here, and then you got on the cruise like that that, that afternoon. Yeah, not yeah. not long after that. Okay. So so yeah. yeah what would Byron have? He had the big cake breakfast, and it had two pancakes, eggs, bacon, and home fries. Mm. And so, really, the big thick pancakes are how. Byron always tries to make his pancakes as thick as he can. So he was really all about these pancakes for sure. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure he, he did clean his, uh, his plate. So he, he really enjoyed it as well. Oh, <laughs> how could James, James, you could, yeah, James could have just ate off your plates. I'm sure. Oh yeah. That's, that's what we should have done <laughs> for sure. <laughs> what do you have? He had mouse pancakes with M and M, so they had it listed on the on the kids menu as as yeah. mouse pancakes, which I thought was super cute that they they did that. Um, and it had like a sweet cream drizzle on it, and mm -hmm. then of course he still wanted to have syrup. So <laughs> M and M sweet cream and syrup, you know what better way to start your day? <laughs> <laughs> this reminds so, me of the Elf he, movie, doesn't it? He, he loves the syrup. <laughs> the Elf. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the movie yeah. from Christmas that, time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. This place has got a great story too. I remember Claudia telling us it started out as I think a weekend part-time gig for, I want to say firemen. If I remember because, you know, the little store there they have, they have a lot of signs that have tributes mm -hmm. to the police and firemen. I remember when I was there, but people just kept raving about it. It grew and got such a reputation because of these portions and, but the decadence, that's the best word, I think, that you, you described it. And oh, yeah. I think they begged them to, you know, open up more days. And I think that, do they only do breakfast, if I remember right? Did, did you notice? I think, they, I think they have a lunch menu as okay. well, but I don't think they're open no dinner. All, all day. Right. I don't think so. Yeah. But yeah. Merritt Island Pancake House, highly recommended, mm -hmm. right? 
I would I would definitely recommend right. trying it out if you're in the area. We were we stayed in Port Canaveral and it wasn't really too far of a drive to drive to Merritt Island and then go back to the port. So Where'd you it, stay? Was, it was a how was the hotel we, you had that night? We stayed at a Radisson. It was just it was actually just kind of a deal that that sure. Byron had found online to stay and it was fine. I mean, you know, we went to the pool and it's like this is not a Disney yeah. pool right here. <laughs> like yeah. it, but you know, it was it was fine and we had a there was a restaurant that we ate at that night before that was walking distance from the, from the hotel too. So that worked out well. So yeah, it was I'm so good. pleased. I'm so pleased you remember that and, <laughs> and gave it a try. That's yeah. That's my heart. I learned, some, I learned some things from you, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you and all of our other friends. <laughs> I know I can learn from all you guys. It's, it's, it works both ways. So yep. let's talk about the, you know, we, I've interviewed many people about cruises and the food is definitely a highlight of the trip normally. Right. 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 We so, had a great experience with, with the food on the, on the trip. All right. So let's do it. Tell me some of your favorites. So probably my favorite meal of the trip was when we went to Palo, which is one of the adults only uh, restaurants that they have on the ship. It's, it's priced either per person. So it's either they have like a prefix menu that they give you like two choices of appetizers. I think there were like three entree choices and two dessert choices. And then they had a wine pairing that you could do with that prefix thing. So we kind of went into it thinking that's what we were going to do. Mm -hmm. But then the server there was just describing all of the food with such, you know, beautiful words. And we were, I was, I, when she described one of the pasta dishes, I thought, okay, no, I'm going to have to do the, the regular, uh, you know, price per item order that they had. And so that way worked out as well. Um, they do have another restaurant on the ship, Remy's, and that one is priced like $125 per person. So that would kind of be more like a Disney fine dining. And mm -hmm. I noticed that they do have, it looks like you can order off the menu as well there. Mm -hmm. Um, but we didn't go there, so I can't really speak mm -hmm. too much to that, but, but Paulo was, was really great. So yeah. What'd you have? We had, so we, we always love fried calamari and they had a fritos di calamari, a gamberi dish, which was these, this huge shrimp that was deep fried. And then, um, also calamari, they had a lemon garlic mayonnaise that was really mm -hmm. delicious to dip it in. And then also a marinara sauce mm -hmm. um, that you could use as well. So that was a really good starter. It was really crispy and flavorful. And Was the calamari really tender? It was tender. It was good. It was mm -hmm. very good. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was the thing at G3. I had calamari a couple of places, Spice Road Table and Space 220. I'd never mm -hmm. had calamari as good as that. Those, both those places are just fantastically done. So yeah, I think we we tried the calamari at Space Two Twenty Once too, and that was that That's was really good. good. So those sauces, yeah, look we, really we tend good to like too. the calamari. Yeah, <laughs> yummy. I know I love fried seafood. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Can't pass that up too much. Yeah, that's one of my favorite <laughs> meals. We've got some good places in Connecticut on the shore. As you know, we go, you hear us talking about those. Oh, All yeah. right, keep going. So Byron likes to eat salad. I'm really bad. I don't like to eat salad as much <laughs> as he does, but yeah. he really likes to get a salad when we go places. And so he had a mescaline salad that had a uh, oak leaf, which sounds crazy, but that uh, butter <laughs> lettuce, which we a lot of times we do like to eat butter lettuce at home too escarole, spinach, grape tomatoes, and Prosecco vinaigrette. So he really enjoyed yeah. that. The vinaigrette, he, he said, was very good. That so. sounds good. I love vinaigrettes. Yeah. I, 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 like, mm -hmm. I eat salads at home. I don't eat them on vacation, though. <laughs> 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 Bad on me. I should eat more salad yeah, all I the know. time. But <laughs> <laughs> Let's all pledge right now, Jamie. We will. No. I don't right, know if it's ever going to happen. If you, if you catch me eating a salad on, in Disney World. <laughs> You, you might think I got a we'll screw know something's loose. Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I finally lost it. Oh uh, yeah. I'm trying to lose some weight right now. I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm a week and a half into it. Yeah. I, I need to do the same thing, especially after this trip. So. <laughs> I understand. Well, that's part of the fun. All right. Oh, keep yeah. going. You got lots of stuff here on this list. Yeah. So Agnolotti was what she described that I, I thought, okay, that's when I'm going to get this instead. It has, it was butternut squash, which I really love butternut squash, mm -hmm. um, buffalo mozzarella, amaretti, 
and sage brown butter with basil. And so all those things, I just know we're going to be super savory and delicious. And it was amazing. She split it between Byron and I and Byron, it was kind of too sweet. He didn't like the sweetness and it wasn't super sweet. It was just more of a savory sweet. And so I ended up getting, (laughs) he he ate the salad and I had all the pasta. (laughs) So, but it was definitely, that was probably the most memorable food that that I had on the trip was, was that pasta. I would absolutely go back for that again. It was sage brown butter. I mean, that just tops it all off perfectly. So. Uh, what's a buffalo mozzarella? <laughs> um, I think it's that like softer, you know, um, kind of watery mozzarella uh, type stuff. So I love mozzarella. So yeah, I had I do Very have good. some pictures of it, but I will have to pull them up. <laughs> nice. I I got the seared jumbo scallops. I love scallops, and so I think I had scallops for probably at least three of the nights that we were on the trip. And I will say that I could tell a difference between the scallops at Palo versus the main dining room. These were a lot more tender. When we were at Palo, and I don't know how it normally is, but we had like a six o'clock dining time, and it really wasn't very many people in there at all. So it felt very, you know, private and personal and we had a view of the ocean kind of sitting right there looking out the window. And so it was, it was a really good spot for sure. But, but those scallops were delicious. There were, they had artichokes and fava beans. I can't really tell you that I remember the fava, fava <laughs> beans from that dish or not, but, um, and then a Pinot Grigio risotto. So it was, it was very good for sure. So. I'm going to have a hard time with this diet doing these podcasts. Yeah, Jamie. I know. <laughs> this is rough. <laughs> That all sounds so good. And then, okay, so oh, then, yeah. and then, uh, Byron had something I would love to. Right. <laughs> he had the, um, the beef, the grilled prime Angus beef tenderloin steak with a gorgonzola <laughs> sauce. So they had choices wow. of different sauces that you could do with the steak. And I think one of them is like a pepper, pink peppercorn or something like that. But we always are going to choose cheese probably if we have an option. So <laughs> you and me we both. chose that. <laughs> and our server did, which the servers in the restaurants for kids, they'll put uh, ketchup, they spoon out the ketchup from a little dish and they make it in a little Mickey Mouse shape. And mm. so she was telling Byron, she was making a little Mickey Mouse shape with the, with the steak and the gorgonzola so- mm. sauce on his, on his plate <laughs> for him. But he, he really enjoyed the, the steak um, and, and that sauce as well. So. And yeah, dessert too. And then we had dessert too. And so <laughs> I tried the amaretto souffle. I think Paulo's more famous for their chocolate souffle that they do, okay. but I just wanted to try the amaretto souffle and it was really good. I think I've decided I'm a lot more of like a colder, like, I don't know. I like the mousses and stuff a lot more. So I can't, the, what was really amazing about this souffle was it came with ex- espresso gelato. And that espresso gelato was really delicious. <laughs> I don't know if they serve that anywhere else on the ship, but I should have tried to find it because that was the highlight of the okay. souffle for sure. Sounds good. And vanilla sauce. Oh, I like vanilla. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then Byron got the tiramisu and he liked it. Mm. I was going to say a little tip from us because we have Publix near us. And I know we all talk about public uh, subs and everything. Know. Okay. Well, I mean, everybody on the everybody with the podcast, I think, talks about. Oh, I know. I didn't know you had them in Georgia. Oh, yeah, yeah, we do, we do. We Byron compares all tiramisu's that he eats to the tiramisu from Publix Bakery. (laughs) It is, it is truly a very good tiramisu. So, if anybody ever goes and gets a Publix sub, okay, you ought to try the tiramisu too Uh, because I'm a fan of tiramisu. It's quite delicious. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But but this one was really good as well on on the ship. How'd it so rank? He liked it. Did he rank it high? Um, I think he ranked it pretty mm-hmm. high. Okay. Yeah, because he's had some that he said, no, no. That one was good. And then we also did have the tiramisu. They had a tiramisu in the um, buffet restaurant that he got, and he liked it as well. So mm. um, I think I think the dream did pretty good on the tiramisu ranking for Byron. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard about this restaurant on the boat before, and it sounds like it was a, a winner. It was, it was. I'd like to try Remy too. And, but Byron said, he said, 
how could it really be that much better? You know, it was yeah. so good that, you know, how could it be better? You know, I don't know. It might be. I might just want to go back just because of the Agnolotti, you know, I might have to go back to follow. <laughs> Sounds like a good enough reason for me. <laughs> right. Now they do, uh, you got your bullet here, dining rotation. What does that mean? The, you, I always heard you keep your same server. Is that still going on? Right, right. So you keep your same server, but you go to a different restaurant kind of every night. So I wasn't really sure how it was going to work out. I thought you would go to the same restaurant like the first and the last night because there's three restaurants on the dream. The way that they did it was we went to the same restaurant Tuesday night and Wednesday night because Wednesday night they do pirate night and all of the restaurants have the same menu that night. And so we started at uh, Enchanted Garden, which is kind of like an Alice in Wonderland theme a little bit. I don't know. I feel like it's kind of a, feels like Tiana to me too. <laughs> the, uh, they had Alice in Wonderland kind of pictures on the menu and, and things like that. But there's a, a water fountain in the middle of the restaurant on the mm. ship, which James thought was amazing to see that water fountain, you know, <laughs> in, inside like that. Mm. That one is where the characters, I don't know if they always have done this, but the characters come through and they do a little song and, and, run around the restaurant kind of like they do at some of the character mm -hmm. meals now, but they don't really pause at the tables for pictures or anything like, you know, like that. It's more mm -hmm. of a quick, quick song and they go through. Mm -hmm. So that was our, our first night. I kind of tried to put, so I don't talk about food for too, <laughs> too long, <laughs> kind of the highlight of problem. each. <laughs> <laughs> so that night, the highlight to me that night, I did have scallops that night, but like I said, the scallops at Paulo just, really outshone the scallops um, at the other spots. But the scallops are still good. And that's, mm -hmm. I think that's what Byron and I were kind of talking about, about cruising is nice because the food is good, but you also get to try so many different things on a cruise ship versus what you would maybe try, you know, at home normally. My favorite thing, actually, I got a no sugar, I got the no sugar added syrup because it was a moose bomb. And I love like the moose, mm -hmm. moose things like the, <laughs> Moose that they have at um, yeah. Satuli Canteen, the blue moose that they yeah. have that's a dessert there and, right. and some of the other spots. So this didn't taste like there was no sugar in it. It was very good. It had lemon and had little chunks of raspberry inside of it. It was good and refreshing and, uh, you know, everything. You just basically, you, know, you always say you're either starving or you're super <laughs> full. And we were super full the whole time. <laughs> Not trip, on a cruise so. ship, right? There's just food. <laughs> we were like never starving. <laughs> It's so close so. and accessible all the time, right? Right, for There's sure. For not sure. much else to do but lay around and eat and drink. I know, right, that's, right. That's that's great. And I guess I gotta say this is one of Margita, my wife's favorite kind of desserts, where it has raspberry and chocolate. That's, mm -hmm. If you ever want to know, that's she, what she wants. She huh? really likes that. Yeah, <laughs> so that that one, you know, stood out to me. I know she likes. She would uh -huh. like that one. Yeah. All right. Keep going. You got two more? Yeah. So the second, yeah, we have, yeah. So the second night we went to Royal Palace, which this is honestly, so we had gone to Palo already for six o'clock dinner. We had the late dining. And so we had gotten something for James to eat before we went to the kids club, but I didn't want to miss out an opportunity to try, to try <laughs> the things that I'd kind of heard about. Okay. And so, um, Royal Palace, I'd heard that the, they had a, French onion soup um, that was highly recommended. Jen Glambus recommended that. And then also they had a the uh, souffle there too that they do. Mm. And so I wanted to try both of those. And like I said, I'd already eaten the other <laughs> souffle too. So I only basically had a few bites of those. And the, and the French onion soup was good. It was a lot more, I guess, salty than I kind of was expecting it to be. Um, but it was salty and savory. And so it was, it was good to get yeah. to try that. But my favorite was the, they had a breaded and deep fried brie with an orange and cranberry chutney. And that was, that was delicious. Cause <laughs> I do love brie, yeah. like cold brie or, brie or whatever. <laughs> the holidays <laughs> and so, we always have it. Yeah. <laughs> it was like little triangles of brie and, um, nice. it was, it was good. So didn't eat too much those, of the stuff at Royal Palace. I just uh, wanted to get to experience being there. So those are two of my favorite. I love French onion soup too. So you, you're you're talking my language here. Oh yeah, Jamie. <laughs> I love those two things. <laughs> nice. And then we were again at Royal Palace on Pirate Night. So Pirate Night they have it. <laughs> um, they 
they encourage people to dress up in pirate costumes and, and things like that. And, and they have, uh, I think they call it like a buccaneer takeover. So they have cast members or whatever. I don't know if they're, I guess they're still called cast members on the cruise ship, but <laughs> they have characters come out in pirate costumes and kind of are, you know, as they go by you and everything. Mm. And so, mm-hmm. and the menu was turned, the kids menu turns into a pirate hat and they give you bandanas and stuff. So it's, it's a, it's a fun time. Yeah. Um, but all, like I said, all the restaurants on the ship have the same menu and that menu is only available that night. The highlights to me that night, I guess it was three things. They had a fried Calypso crab cake with Cajun remoulade. And that was really delicious. So like we said, fried, mm-hmm. fried seafood, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> this was something really different that we tried. And actually surprisingly, James really liked it and wanted it the next night, but we couldn't get it because it was only available on pirate night, but it was a mm-hmm. chilled mango soup with passion fruit, ginger and coconut. Yeah. And so the ginger wasn't too overpowering, but I think mm. it kind of gave it a taste because James commented that it tasted like um, yogurt. And so I think that the ginger kind of made it taste more like a yogurt than right. maybe what it was. I don't know, but it was, like, it was very good. Like, I mean, he, yeah. he loved it. He kept stealing it from me. So, you know, chilled soup doesn't right off seem to excite me, but I know that I know what you're saying. And isn't it over at Grand Floridian, the restaurant there, the strawberry soup, my wife, I know. They always rave about that. I think that's a cold soup too. They yeah, that, that was at the the um yeah, the character buffet. meal there, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah and, and after, you know, on other cruises that we've been on, they've had the chilled soups like that too. So it's always mm-hmm. kind of neat to try those things. That, like I said, you know, yeah. you wouldn't normally think go to a restaurant and order yeah. a chilled soup, right? <laughs> yeah, I know it doesn't sound. Like, <laughs> it's usually hot soup, right? But yeah, no, right. It's more like a dessert <laughs> than a meal, right? Kind of thing, right. Very good. Um, and then I had a caramel macadamia nut cheesecake tart with whipped cream and caramel ganache. And that was <sighs> oh really boy. good. Cause yeah, that's up my caramel, alley too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Caramel's always going to make it a good idea for me. I, so. I'm with you there. Cheesecake too. That, oh, yeah. It was it was a perfect combination and uh, sweet and macadamia yeah. nut. You know, macadamia. It was great. Yeah. My mom <laughs> loved macadamia nuts too. She, got, she turned me those, onto those. I don't, oh, yeah. get, I don't get them. Good. I don't even see them. I don't even know if they're really expensive. I know. <laughs> At least they were. Mm, yeah. yeah. That they is, probably, all sounds really are. good. Boy, you're killing me. Right. Nope. <laughs> and then the last thing on the ship, a- Animator's Palette was a re- it's a restaurant where they do, um, they have Crush on the screen and it's kind of like Turtle's Hot with Crush. Crush will interact with the tables. He'll ask you questions and they get everybody to do the wave and James was really, that was probably his favorite restaurant that we went to because he was just like so wowed that Crush was on the screen. And they would have, even when Crush wasn't up there, they had Mr. Ray or Bruce or, you know, whatever character Dory would come by or Nemo. And uh, we weren't as close to the screen as I wish we were have. So we could have interacted more with Crush, but we were still in there where we could, we could see him and everything. And so that was, it was a neat, and it was our last night, so that was a neat experience. But uh-huh. there was a black truffle pasta per set that I had heard about on some of the vlogs that I had watched. And uh-huh. I was looking forward to those the entire week. So <laughs> I ordered those and I told the uh, server that I was excited about those. And he ended up bringing me two of those. Uh-huh. Um, I think there was a table of, of uh, single ladies that had come on the cruise together and he had that the same thing for them. They were looking forward to it the whole week too. So he took them extra plates out. So he brought one for me too. So that was really neat, but it was really delicious. They had a truffle scented cheese. And I mean, truffle is always going to be a winner for me and, and had a little champagne sauce. So kind of a slightly sweet sauce on top. So Mm. those were really good. That was my main, the main thing I ate that, that night. (laughs) Fantastic. So did, did we cover all the food for the the cruise? I um, think so. That looks real good. Yeah, yeah. We had some drinks on the cruise. I don't know if you want to do those or if you want to do the park stuff first. Let's do the parks, and then we'll cover the okay. drinks, like in order. You have them here on your trip report. So okay. yeah, let's cover. Keep going Sounds on food. Good. You ever spent some time here in Magic Kingdom and Flower and Garden? Right. So we went to Magic Kingdom. We got off the ship, I think about 
I don't know, it must have been about nine o'clock by the time we got in the car. So it took us about an hour to get from the from the part or the cruise port to Magic Kingdom and we uh or to the parks. And so we went to checked in at Polynesian and then we rode the monorail over and went to Magic Kingdom for the day and we ate breakfast on the ship before we got off. And so I was kind of like I needed to decompress from all the food that we had eaten on the cruise ship. <laughs> so we really didn't eat lunch that day, but Byron got hungry. And so he can't ever resist the cheeseburger spring rolls. And <laughs> so he went to the cheeseburger spring roll cart and picked up some of those and, and he enjoyed those a whole lot. I know those are a geek and favorite. They always hit the spot. <laughs> yes. I, I'm glad he likes them. Oh yeah. Um, Very fresh. I got, Tropical Serenade, which is the um, float that they have at Aloha Isle. I think it's a special one for the 50th right now, but it has the coconut soft serve, which is really mm. good. I have had the coconut soft serve by itself before, but I know I've heard a lot of geeks talk about mm. the Tropical yeah. Serenade, so I wanted to try it. Yeah, what you um, think? It's got the, it was very good. It was um, a good combination. They used the pog juice as the liquid in there. Mm. And then it had an upside down pineapple cake pop. So it basically just looked like a regular cake pop with kind of like a red icing on it. Of course, James immediately took most of that <laughs> from me, the, the cake pop, but uh-huh. he really liked the float as well. And then I did see a lot of people taking advantage of Kevin and Deborah's favorite seating area there at the, at the exit of the tiki room. <laughs> so on the floor, I noticed that <laughs> they made it famous. The first G3. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. I like how they got different treats in this area between that spot right there, Aloha Isle, and over where, you know, I just had some good news today. Amanda Bond messaged me mm-hmm. that the citrus swirl is back. I don't know if you noticed yeah. it. Did you notice that was when you were there? We didn't go, but we didn't go by Past there. Okay. So, yeah. But anyway, that's good that, news, everybody. I saw the news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the, I love, you know, this is one area where I'll go off my usual and i would love to try that coconut soft serve that sounds really good it was good i mean you know it's different having the pog juice versus i know a lot of the floats have the carbonated yeah. drinks in there so That's I, I liked too. it having yeah. the having good the com- pog juice like yeah, that I'm so. with you. good combination and you did another mm-hmm. one of our favorites skipper canteen we did we we ended yeah. up going back to the to the resort a little bit to take a rest but we had dinner reservations for skipper canteen and I think that we've always really liked Liberty Tree Tavern. And I'm not saying we're not going to go back there, but we kind of Skipper Canteen's probably becoming a must do on each on each trip for us. <laughs> I'm seeing this happening. There's a there's a cult growing. <laughs> right, right. It, is it all yeah. because of this Brazilian cheese bread? This is like hysterical. That's, that's definitely a big a big draw for us. <laughs> we do really love that Brazilian cheese bread. I had Why? a friend that was at Magic Kingdom yeah. yesterday, and it was still there yesterday. So um, I know there's apparently like a supply chain issue with the tapioca flour that they used to make it. Oh, okay. But uh, that's I think that's what Scott Days from the Mickey Fowl uh, podcast said. But okay. And I, when I was looking this up, I realized it's been there since 2019. So it used uh-huh. to, they used to have a printed out special menu, uh-huh. apparently, that this was on. But, you know, now they, they mention it to you if it's available. And I think they even didn't call it, like, Brazilian cheese bread mm-hmm. when they told us. It was like, we have a Parmesan bread if you would like to, you know, have it. And they said the chimichurri cream sauce and we're like yes we do want one of those so <laughs> it's just great because it comes with so many of those little cheese breads so it's really a good serving size huh? to have and share that sauce that they do with it the cream cheese chimchurri sauce and then it's got like a little chimchurri as well <laughs> it's just so delicious i mean you just can't I know, I, while I, love I was it. sitting yeah. there i was messaging my friend and i was like you must go here when you're, <laughs> when just, you're in the park <laughs> it's just funny how people rave about this i mean it's really bread and cheese yeah. that when you get down to the right <laughs> i think it's the sauce really that okay. makes it i mean the bread and cheese like it's yeah. like a pillow of cheesy bread you know uh-huh. yeah. and it's not like a fried cheese stick it's all kind of combined together you know which kind of makes it so delicious and then you dip it in that sauce it's just I don't know. You you think about it when you're not there. (laughs) You got me convinced. (laughs) 
And I like you. You took some advice from our good friend Deirdre. Right, right. Her uh, we've had them before, but the pork cachapas, that was my entree. And I think that's just the way to go with that because it's, it's a great amount to eat. It's got those little, you know, cornbread bottoms on it with the savory pork on top, the um, little bit of spice. They have like a pepper sauce on it. I'm not a big spice fanatic, but it was just enough heat. And then the avocado cream is really just kind of refreshing and, and delicious. So I, I love those. I mean, I'm probably always going to do that, you know, from now on. So, Do you think Skipper Canteen's gotten better as the years have gone by? Because they were really spicy. Yeah, I, I remember the first time I went there, I had a spicy steak salad. That was really too much for me, spicy-wise. But I had good – boy, we're getting some great reports. People are loving this place. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that I went long enough ago to, okay. to be able to compare it, you know, appropriately. Right. I don't, I, I think the first time we went was probably, uh, we first trip back to the parks in September, 2020. So, we're, um, we're, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> we're calling it our hidden lounge at the magic kingdom now, Jamie, right? I think so. They, <laughs> they have a, they call it a veranda shandy there. That's a blue moon with, chipotle and pineapple juice that's very delicious so that oh. works out for my my lounge spot oh, wow <laughs> yeah. that's cheating a little I don't bit think, there. <laughs> yeah i think usually it's been like the blue moon like the shandies that i've been able to get at magic kingdom have just been like lemonade and and beer together which is what it typically is but interesting okay this this one is neat it kind of had just a slight bit of kick to it and then the refresh, you know, sweetness of the pineapple juice. It was, it's, it's a good one. <laughs> I like how you got like, this is like a huge paragraph of all the stuff that you have. And James had mac and cheese. <laughs> right. Which was the, the theme of the trip. You know, he had mac and cheese probably most of the time on the cruise ship, which was fine because we had already paid for his food. So it didn't matter, you know? And then he had mac and cheese at the, at we got the, all these exotic and things. Too. And then oh, yeah. little James mac and cheese. <laughs> yep. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Fantastic. And Byron had the grilled steak. Right. He had the Dr. Yeah. Falls steak. He liked He liked it. He said it was good. So he he doesn't really like to do an appetizer as an entree like I do, but yeah. All right. <laughs> he enjoyed the steak. Fantastic. Flower and Garden. Yeah, so I think we knocked out a bunch in you a short amount of time, really. You slayed it here is what, is what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> that was our main. That was our main mission when we went into Epcot was to see I what think all it's we could a successful, try. <laughs> let's take the success you had at the Flower and Garden booth. Right. Looks so good. my my item that I wanted to try was I had heard about the lavender honey mustard marinated chicken flatbread from the Honey Bistro. It was really good. Uh, I like the sweetness of the lavender honey that was on it. Um, it had a good cheese topping as well. It was a really good portion, I feel like, too. So it was a good, I mean, it wasn't obviously the whole lunch, but that was a good kind of starting thing to have that day. So um, I would definitely go back and I would recommend that one again, too. So Excellent. And then we never miss hitting up Canada on the <laughs> any of the festivals. <laughs> and so advice. this was no <laughs> exception. <Yeah. laughs> so we got... Byr this is kind of what I got the lavender flatbread and then Byron was like, I'm going to Canada. And so um, he got two of the beef tenderloin tip with mushroom Bordelais sauce. Mm -hmm. It came with whipped potatoes and then garden vegetables. Yeah. And it had some carrots with it that James really liked. He usually only likes raw carrots actually, but he mm -hmm. really liked those carrots that were, that were with that, that dish. So yeah. that they were, really good. I don't even I don't even know if I tasted those. I, don't, I think the, the guys ate them up. So. All right. They didn't save none for mom. <laughs> no. Buggers. <laughs> um, and then they had a little specialty maple popcorn shake. So when we ordered the beef tenderloin tips yeah. and went to the checkout counter, the person that like tears your ticket to yeah. give it to the, to tell the people what to, the food to give you, James asked about, a shake or whatever. And she told him, Oh, we have this one and it tastes like syrup, you know? And so he's, <laughs> he likes it all about yeah, that. And he's right? continuing. Oh yes. <laughs> so he continued to talk about that. So we found a table and then James and I had to go back to Northern bloom and get the, um, <laughs> maple popcorn shake like for him. So 
You liked he it? did. He yeah. liked it. He liked it. I shared it with him too. So I drank some yeah. of it too. And yeah. it was, it was good. It was, yeah. it definitely did have a syrup, you know, not too sweet though. I mean, it okay. was a creamy syrup taste, so it was good. I think it would be a, a sweet oh, treat to try. A character. He is such a character. <laughs> That's awesome. He, he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's one of the characters. You don't need he, at Disney World. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Keep going. Byron saw on the menu a BLT scone, and so he wanted to try that. That was at Cider House. That was, it had apple, applewood smoked bacon, sun-dried tomato, and basil. And then I'm not sure if the applewood smoked bacon was built into it or not. But it had like a bacon, kind of a sweet bacon jam that was right beside it. Mm. And it was kind of sprinkled with sugar like a scone, Mm -hmm. you know, often would be. So Byron enjoyed it. He said it wasn't what he expected, but I thought it was very good. The 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 sweet bacon jam was really delicious with it. Mm. So I mean, I would recommend trying it. That's kind of the neat thing about Flower and Garden is you know you can try some different things and you're Mm. not getting a huge portion. So so it's good. It's good to get to 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 taste. (laughs) For sure. We tried the arepas. I think I'm saying that right. (laughs) At the Uh. La Isla Fresca, which is kind of the um, Encanto themed booth that they still have. So they had it Mm -hmm. out. I can't remember what it was called for festival of the arts but th- i think everybody was like why did they not have the arepas that's what she mm. makes you know that okay. heals peels people in encanto and so they had some different choices of those but we had the one with the melted queso fresco and i i, I guess i don't really know what arepas are and so maybe i just like mm. the brazilian cheese bread so much i thought the cheese was going to be inside some kind of bread but it was kind of almost like the um base of the pork cachapas kind of like a corn cake base and then it had the cheesy stuff on top so it was it was tasty it wasn't our yeah. favorite thing that we test checked All out right. but it was tasty for sure so <laughs> and then yeah it, there's more even though we left the parks <laughs> at like two o'clock like we didn't get there till 10 and we left it too so <laughs> so byron then saw this crispy moho marinated pork belly with avocado cream at Citrus Blossom. So we had that as well as the tuna tataki bowl that they had there too. So um, the tuna tataki bowl kind of had like a, it's almost like a mango and avocado kind of salsa, like a chopped salsa with it. And then the pork belly had like a corn salsa and then salsa verde and plantain chips. So those were good mm-hmm. as well. It had lots of lots of different flavors to experience and, and different ones in each of those. They love to have long names for these. <laughs> Oh, trace, yeah. they, they have to they have to give as many words descriptive <laughs> words as they can in, in the title of each of each item <laughs> it seems that way that's far fun <laughs> so this was something that i've heard about for the last few years and we've never tried it and i can't believe that i waited so long and it was the frozen violet lemonade yeah. we had it at pineapple promenade have you had it before no but it, it's Someone, it's good. I, I want to think. I think you would love it. <laughs> Selena and Jackie, I think, have talked about this. Right. I, I think you would like it because don't you kind of yeah. like the sour? You like the sour yeah. a little bit, right? Uh, so absolutely. it was sweet, but it kind of had a little bit of a tartness to it because of the, yeah. you know, the lemonade. I'm a big fan and, of lemonade, um, frozen lemonades. Yeah. Right. And it had the little, the violet on top of it. Yeah. It was really, it was really good. I mean, that was probably. No, that and the lavender honey chicken flatbread were my two tops of the, of the festival this. that we tried. So, so the flower and gardens look at me going. I gotta, I gotta keep your report in my yeah my notes, Jamie, because yeah, I, I'm gonna yeah. be there near like the very end of it. So oh yeah, you gotta, gotta try this. the present about lemonade. Yeah, because yes. I think it ends on July second or something like that, and then yeah, uh, food and wine starts like later in July maybe. So. Yeah, these are all fantastic. What a mm-hmm. boy, you slayed this food review. <laughs> you're you're into an hour here, girl. Oh my goodness. You, you know you know how to do it. And right. what do you think? Flower and Garden, where's that rank in your festivals? Have you been you've been to most of them, right? I've been to, I think I've been to all of them except yeah. for the festival of the holidays. Because okay. I think we always go when it's before it starts. Yeah. I mean but, yeah, compare it to food and wine, right? That's the big one. That's the right. first one. Mm, she's... I, I kind of I kind of think Flower and Garden might be the top one for me because the weather is just really nice. Mm-hmm. The flowers that they have are just so beautiful everywhere. I love the floating ones that they do in the water. And then the foods are really delicious too. So, I mean, it's hard to pick. 
I love I love Festival of the Arts because I like the the artist as well. But I think Flower and Garden, just the like I said, the weather and the flowers and everything, it's 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 beautiful. Yeah, I'm glad to hear you say that. We've Lindsay and I have talked about this together, and we agree with you. I, I, mm-hmm. I mean, you don't have to. It doesn't matter. You go, they're all fine, right? But <laughs> right, it doesn't get as much press, obviously, because of the Food and Wine Festival is the famous one. I have a really neat pop up playground that they have during flower and garden that obviously they didn't have last year um, but they had it again this year and we went during flower and garden i think back in 2019 and it was a different playground but it was still kind of a pop-up and it was in that area i think between figment and like when you start to go into yeah. world showcase yeah they had all kinds of really cool stuff for kids to play on. I mean, we really were kind of on a mission, obviously, with the food. So James didn't stray, but it, it would be a great place. It's a great place for the kids to play because they always have that other playground that's over there closer to the um, yeah. the store. I can't, it's not mouse ears anymore, but you know what I'm, yeah. <laughs> you well, know the one all, I'm talking about. It's all dug up over there, too. It's all walls. Right, and... right. Did yeah. they have the so, butterfly? garden did they did and we really went in we i kind of had forgotten about this we had a really cute fun moment uh we were in the butterfly garden and Pooh was out with his butterfly net on the grass where he stands kind of beside figment and he came all the way close to where we were looking through the mesh and and we said oh are you i said oh are you hunting for butterflies and james said they're in here you need to come in here so he was looking around like with his hand and he acted like he couldn't find them and it was just so cute it was a great character interaction that we had that i did record thankfully but um but that was that was a fun one so yes. the butterflies there were so many butterflies in there too oh, cool. it, was, it was really neat i'm like glad we gardens. walked through there yeah i'm with you oh yeah especially after a long oh, yeah. well we George, you don't have as long cold winters as we do, but it's pretty. Right. <laughs> spring is a, a nice time of year. I'm, oh yeah. I'm a, that that <laughs> we kind of have that tight window in Georgia where it's like not too cold and not too hot, you know. So <laughs> it's it's nice when you have that that cool breeze, but but it's not too cool, you know. So we we enjoy one my, that. <laughs> one of my favorite things is the music over at the American Pavilion. Did you happen to notice who was there while you were there? I can't remember who it said. I mean, I did see they had the list of the musicians yeah. that were there. I don't know how early they started or anything either. All the good ones are um, back. Like that they've had. Yeah, you I know, saw that. <laughs> yeah, the lineup and the artists. We're excited. We're going to see Herman's Hermits. Oh, yeah. Peter, Peter Noon and Herman's Hermits, which who I've seen mm-hmm. before, but my wife has always been a big fan of that, like mm-hmm. 60s British invasion music. So he's going to be fantastic. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well done. All right, we're going to move over to the lounge. It looks like you put a couple of things down here for, for drinks. Yeah. There was a spot called Cove Cafe that was in the adults-only area on the cruise ship, and they had coffee that they made all day. There was a really excellent barista there. They had this. Uh, they did have like a little punch card, so if you got six coffees there, or five coffees, you got the sixth one for free, which was nice because of course I liked one of the more <laughs> expensive <laughs> of the choices that they had, <laughs> but, but then it became a lounge and that was one of the places they had a lot of the tasting classes and things like that, that you could sign up for. So that was one of the spots that they hosted some of the like, you know, whiskey tastings or bourbon tastings or whatever that they, that they had. But they also had this really awesome, I wish I'd taken a picture of it, cold brew contraption. And it was like a, bowl at the top that was almost like a whole circle and then it had twisty tubing that went down to where the grounds were and then a collection device at the bottom and then that's what they served as their cold brew coffee um and byron had one of those and he he liked it because because we saw it that first night we said is that that's (laughs) real really used and (laughs) and it was so it was it was kind of a cool thing to see Uh and there they also had like in the mornings, they would have kind of sweet treats or muffins and things like that that you could pick sure. up. And so with a purchase, you got one of those um, little desserts or whatever. They also had these little Madeline pastry things that, that Byron really liked. And again, he's not real big on real sweet stuff, but they were just kind of sweet enough and really good with the coffee. And then in the evening, they had like olives and cheese and things like oh. that. So even though it, even though that place was extra to buy the drinks, that was kind of a, still something that you could have that was included. So that was kind of neat. 
I to love, have there. I love all of that. You just <laughs> brush through olives and cheese, but that's... Oh, yeah. You know, I've never really gotten into these specialty coffees. I mean, I love my coffee. And I love coffee in the morning. Mm-hmm. But I, I've never gotten into these. You're uh, making me think why. <laughs> right. So I, I had that. I, what I really liked that they had, and it was kind of their specialty drink. It was a salted caramel coconut latte. Mm-hmm. And I had it iced once, and then I had it hot once. And that one was really good. And they also do kind of like I think they do at some of the Joffreys um, at Disney Springs and maybe even like at Contemporary where the coffee shops, they did the little characters on the foam that they do. So I had Stitch on my mm. hot latte uh, mm. the morning that I got that. So uh, that was really neat. It was a really good latte. And I, mm. I, I just normally drink. We don't do a lot of Starbucks and coffee shops and stuff like mm. that at home, but Okay. It's fun to get it on, on vacation for sure. Yeah, yeah, you're selling me on this idea. <laughs> I don't know why. I was just thinking before I that break between work and doing a podcast show, I should go out and get something fun like this. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's right. Power me through I mean, the night. Right. My evening work. <laughs> like this is work. Uh, <laughs> it's not work at all. And then, yeah, Meridian, oh, yeah. Meridian Bar. Fun. Right. Meridian Bar. So we went, when we went to Palo and we started to check in, they told us to have a seat in that area. And so I thought, well, this is a really neat area. I wonder if you have to have a reservation or if they had a dress code because they had a dress code for Palo and and Mm -hmm. Remy. And they said that you you didn't have to have a reservation. So the first night we were there, when I sat down to wait for our uh, dining reservation, I ordered a La Margarita, which the server explained as like a margarita like martini. Mm-hmm. And it was really good. It was kind of an orange flavored mar- drink, really re- refreshing. I, you know, could have had a glass of wine, but you know, why not try something different? Yeah, you know, when you're on vacation. So, exactly. kind of, yeah. And then Byron and I did go back on our last night on the ship. Because the third night on the ship, James took a three-hour nap, so we really didn't get to go on our little adults outing. But we were able to sit on our balcony and have a glass of wine. But we went up there, and they it would have been a great place to see the sunset, but it was a really overcast uh, day that day, and so you really couldn't see the sunset. But I ordered the pink Cadillac, which was recommended by the server, and it was really just like a beautiful drink. It came in a champagne flute. And it had Ciroc coconut, watermelon liqueur, moe ice. And then there was a like a dip dyed dried pineapple slice in the drink, which I thought was a flower. It was so gorgeous, uh-huh. but uh-huh. it wasn't too sweet because I tend to not really like sweet. You know, uh-huh. if I'm going to get a drink like that, I don't really want it to be super sweet. But it was just a really refreshing. It was it was hmm. just a gorgeous way to end up into the trip. I like um, the name of it too. So. Good. Good oh, one. yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see that at Disney World. Right. For and I think Byron garden. got like a, oh yeah, it would be a <laughs> it would good one for well, Flower right? Garden. <laughs> I know. Fit right in. Uh-huh. Those are fantastic. So. Wow. You slayed this food and drinks. <laughs> this was amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, we don't, we don't <laughs> even know you. where we're going. Where did the ship go to, Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> All hour... that we went for was the food, right? <laughs> oh, we're over an hour. We don't even... <laughs> Do we even go anywhere? <laughs> we leave the dock? Well, this... <laughs> right, right. <laughs> We did, our cruise went to Nassau, and then it also went to Castaway Key, which is Disney's nice. private uh, island in the Bahamas. Yeah, fantastic. So our kind of splurges, other than our Apollo dinner, were mm. that we signed up for some excursions. Um, and we had kind of thought about just staying on the ship when we went to Nassau, but when I was looking at the excursion options, there was a pirate ship excursion option called Blackbeard's Revenge. Mm. And James loves trains he loves disney world but he also loves pirates and so i thought well, we got to take this opportunity to check check this out and see see what it's all about awesome. so it was it was fun it was kind of like a stage show on the ship basically the the crew members were in costumes there was a guy that was they called him silly willy and he like climbed on the rope ladders and mm-hmm. i think they were all kind of pretending to be drunk or maybe they you know <laughs> maybe they were no, but, um, <laughs> like, well, kind of like the, the characters in the Pirates of the Caribbean. Right, right. That's kind of, he probably played a lot like Jack Sparrow, I'd say. Yeah. So okay. they, they were, they were fun. 
they ended up doing like some dancing and sing, you know, games with the kids and everything. We rode out from the port, um, past a bunch of beautiful houses. Nobody was saying, Oh, that's so-and-so's house. You know, it's just kind of the music and everything as we went out, but it was a nice, get, nice to get to ride out, um, on the ship. We found a spot where there was a lot, it was so clear. You could see the fish, you know, in the water. Mm. Um, and they had some bread that they let the kids throw in. And that was, that was really fun to kind of get to see James interacting with, you know, the crew member. This was not a was part of the Disney, but it was actually, which was kind of interesting. I thought it was all people from the cruise ship that were on the, uh, on this excursion. So mm. I don't know if. Disney's setting it up more like that, maybe, or if the cruise lines are doing that or not, but mm. just people from our crew, cruise. So they said, you know, you got to stay together getting off and you got to all get back on kind of at the same time too on the ship. But mm. uh-huh. so that was fun. They ended up playing. So the, the pirates on the ship acted like the captain was bad. And so they tied him up with rope and then they had to get somebody to be the new captain. And so they had all the kids play a hot potato game where they played the music and passed the little thing. And if the music stopped, you know, whoever's holding the little coconut or whatever it was, Uh was out. And so James made it through several rounds, but he did not get to be the captain of the ship. So (laughs) I didn't know it it was a a mutiny on the ship. Right. It was mutiny. Yep. So, yeah, (laughs) yeah. So it was fun. I mean, it was a good experience. (laughs) (laughs) So cool. At Castaway Key, we did, and I don't know. So right now, um, Disney is still doing where you have to, basically, it's like a virtual queue, just like it would be if you were trying to get, you know, the old virtual queue for Rise of the Resistance or Remy or whatever. Mm -hmm. At seven o'clock in the morning, you had to, you're supposed to log on and sign up for a time to get off the boat. And I think like if you were, concierge level you didn't have to do that but that's kind of how they were trying to kind of do crowd control getting off the ship but um they did say that if you had a uh, an excursion booked for castaway key you didn't have to do the virtual queue you just got off the ship whenever you wanted to which was which was nice and i didn't know that was going to be a perk but it kind of was to be able to do that and not have to stress about you know a a virtual queue situation or whatever so we signed up for the stingray feeding it was at like 10 o'clock and there's a family beach area at Castaway Key. That's kind of where we had ended up. And we stopped kind of where we were close enough where it was easy to just walk right back there. And the water was very cold. So, oh. like, um, <laughs> Interesting. I don't know. Some We kind of got in a little bit, but the pirate, the, the stingray feeding that they had, they had these little tables kind of set up where they had trained the stingrays to swim up. And they had sting, like, jello sticks some kind of fish jello or whatever that you could feed them in little um, shrimp. They said it was restaurant quality shrimp and stuff that they were feeding them, but you could put it, you'd hold your hand down there on a Mickey shaped mat. And then the stingray would swim up and suck up the food. So you couldn't leave your hand underneath it and then suck it up. You (laughs) could take your hand away just fast enough and then you could kind of pet the stingrays too. So that was neat. And then they had like a time where you could snorkel with the stingrays after that, but, both of the boys refused to get in the water at all. I snorkeled a little bit uh, by myself, but okay. then I decided to get out. So was it chilly then? It was. It was cold. It was. Right. It was cold, but it wasn't unbearably cold. I mean, That's, it was. It was okay. chilly, but <laughs> I like that. I love the animals. That at the aquarium at Epcot, you can they, I, when you're explaining that it's the same kind of way they, they like you said they train them how mm-hmm. to how to be fed and. And it's interesting to, to know that they follow that those cues. Oh yeah, That's and great. I mean they they gave us a little lesson on stingrays before we went out there, and then the the tra- I guess you call them the trainer that was with the table that we were at. She she knew all their names. You know, she'd say, "Oh, that's you know, I can't remember Dolly yeah. or you know whatever the stingrays." Because yeah, uh-huh. I think it was all it was all females, but they'd had some males that snuck in too. So <laughs> <laughs> but it was supposed to be all females in there. Is it an enclosed area? It, I think it was like roped. Yeah, that means there was I mean, some the kind of. Stingrays are kind of trapped was, in this. Sp- right. right, they yeah. were. They were. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> but well. somehow the men had figured out a way. To get <laughs> well, <laughs> we are like so, that, Jamie. You know, I am. <laughs> <laughs> we're persistent. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Well done. Oh yeah, it was good. Wow. All of this going on, 
do you still have any other stories and fun, interesting things that happen? Um, so yeah, so, so I was in a, there's Facebook groups. Like when you start going on a cruise, they have Facebook groups for your actual cruise. So you kind of get to, you know, meet people. Oh, okay. Um, and it, it wasn't a community like the geek and community, but <laughs> you know, because they had a meetup, it was hard to coordinate it because you kind of lose internet access. You know, you're on Disney Wi-Fi, but you can't really get on Facebook. And so once the ship sailed away, that's when they had planned the meetup to be, but it was hard to kind of find everybody to, to get to meet up. But we did actually see one person that was in the group ended up, we saw her several times on the ship, but we were on the elevator on our first day. She saw us in the elevator and she had made, they used to do these fish extender things, which they don't do now. So I really don't know a whole lot about them, but she had been on previous Disney cruises and had prepared some gifts to pixie dust people with. And she had a little, uh, night light that she had done a cut out of the Disney dream logo on oh. and gave it to us. And so that was really oh. neat. Cause I knew I had seen that somebody in the group did. And so I knew her name, you know, from the group and, and that was a neat connection to be able to make. And then she ended up being on the pirate excursion with us and we saw yeah. her different times on the ship too. So yeah, it's funny how that um, happens. Right. Oh yeah. On the cruise ship, especially, I mean, it's like you see somebody and you see them over and over again, even though there's, I don't know how many people there were really were on the ship, but there's a bunch of people on the ship, but you see the same people over and over again. So, yeah, right. so that was neat. That was a, a neat moment. People got their guard down on vacation, right? They're, they're right. T- tend to be <laughs> more friendly. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. Interested in yeah, having conversations with strangers. <laughs> And, and that's, and that's kind of one of the things people say about Disney cruises is neat is you're already, everybody's already kind of going in with a, a usually a love for Disney too, you know, to go yeah, on a Disney yeah. cruise, you know, you usually have an appreciation for Disney. So that sure. immediately gives everybody kind of a, you know, a connection. Um, the girls that James had met at the pool that he got the hot chocolate for, um, my husband was talking to their parents and, you know, they were talking about their Disney trips and, and everything yeah. too. So it, it's, it's neat to have yeah. that connection with people we uh, know, as well. So we know from our group about Disney people, don't we? That's right. We do. We do. <laughs> We've made some friends, haven't we? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> we have. I like this unexpected moment comment you have here from James. Yeah. So it was just a very unprompted. We were sitting out there on the balcony. We just woken up that day and, out there with our breakfast he had his fruit loops and he said yesterday was a great day and i was just like man that makes it all so much better you know to hear his appreciation and the fact that he was it had enjoyed it and then he talked about the slide and the pool and the you know getting on the ship and everything because he's talked about a disney cruise ship for at least two years. So, I mean, he's, he, he knew about a cruise ship. Every time we saw commercials, he would say something about it. So this was definitely something that we had looked forward to getting to do with him. So. He's a brilliant little kid. He, he likes to talk too, doesn't he, Jamie? Oh, he does. He does. <laughs> Yesterday was a great That's day. Good. How profound. Oh yeah. Yeah. So then I did some recordings of him. I asked him questions, you know, I asked him about the trip uh, yeah. and recorded it with my phone. So that was kind of fun. Hopefully. Oh, so precious. Uh, to be able to look back on those. <laughs> yes. You got, you got to, you, you guys that have young kids now with the iPhone and I mean, any kind of mobile phone that takes video and pictures so easily and you just got to mm. store those electronically somewhere so you don't lose them. Oh yeah. You such, yeah. Yeah. You know, back in when well, Mike, we had those big camcorders that were such a pain with the VHS stuck in the side. Oh, oh yeah. Those were, yeah. Those were tough. I, re- I remember what, I remember what my parents that, having those. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's so much easier now with the technology. So, oh yeah. <laughs> fantastic. Wow. You know, this is like one of the best cruise podcast episodes i've ever done jamie i'm telling you oh well, thank this, you such a great job I'm glad to, hopefully hopefully it'll help people have some more information about it i think one thing i was just thinking about that i wanted to say about the the trip was it was so neat um being on the cruise ship because there was disney artwork i mean everywhere you looked so mm. they had different d- archive drawings of dumbo or you know might be little mermaid stuff on one floor so that it was, I guess that's not so much theming, but it was just really cool to be able to see all that, all those things. 
And then they were always playing Disney music of some kind. Mm -hmm. So one day it was the Finding Nemo, the musical from Animal Kingdom Mm -hmm. soundtrack they were playing. They played some of the ride music. Oh, wow. It it was just, it was just really neat ambiance in general on the ship and, and kind of having that, that experience of Disney without, like I said, without being kind of in the hustle and bustle and everything. We, we love the rides. We love the parks. Uh, but this was just a great time to relax mm-hmm. and still still be in the magic, too. So I, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, I like both kinds of vacations. We've always talked fondly of our, our beach vacations in Wildwood, New Jersey, which we haven't gone in. Mm-hmm. It's been a while. I miss those just lay around the beach kind of vacations, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I love this is a good way to do too. it. Oh, yeah. Got to work on Margita. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I need help. My my mom refuses to go. Like she's okay. afraid she would you know get motion saying. sick. So you know she won't saying. do yeah. it. But we always talk about how much I mean, she would enjoy it, I'm sure, and my dad would enjoy it. But you yeah. know, just I know I know this I know the struggle. <laughs> Margie likes that kind of laid back lay on the beach vacation too. Mm-hmm. We like both of the the styles. All oh, right. Yeah. So now what did you learn from this trip? You have any tips for a cruiser? <laughs> Um, I mean, I think take advantage of, of the fun stuff on the ship, to, you know, for sure. It, you know, it's a lot of, you don't want to overpack, you know, all that kind of stuff. We did find some little tricks of different things, like you can get little magnetic hooks to kind of make more organization in your room. Yeah. I don't know. Like, uh, I feel like I'm not really an expert yet. I'm still learning a whole lot, especially <laughs> about the Disney cruise. You don't really have to know too much, right? You're on a boat. And you right, found out, yeah. you, you found yeah. definitely found some good places to eat and drink and right go into right. pools and just enjoy yourself and did you see the island much? We did. We were on we were on the island probably till a little bit after lunchtime. I mean, we could have spent longer on there. We did ride. James asked to go to the kids club that was on the island that we passed by because he really loved going to the kids club. I mean, I think they played games with them constantly and had sure. activities for them to do. So he asked to go. And so we took him and then we went to the adults only area to kind of check it out and uh, grab a bite to eat while we were there. So um, there was a whole lot of that Island that we didn't explore. And that was one thing they have, they call them double dips where they go to castaway key twice. So like you do castaway key and then you have a day at sea and then you're back at castaway key. And so uh. That would be one that I would be interested in trying out sometime just to have more time to explore yeah. Castaway Key because I think there's a, there's a whole lot you can definitely do there. We did have a sea day, but it was our last day. Okay. The island's big enough to really... It is. I mean, I don't know how they... I don't know if it's always just one Disney ship at port each time or mm. if it's ever more than one Disney ship. I mean, I don't know how... I don't have anything to compare it to okay. pre pre COVID yeah. and everything, but I think, you know, things are of course creeping up more like back to normal, just like they are at the parks. One thing that I noticed, I had watched blogs to try to see what to expect. And I had watched and they had small groups of families go in cause they announce your name when you get onto the ship, which is really cool. And so I was so excited about that and I wanted to record it and everything but it just happened so fast that I really couldn't (laughs) record it. And then the videos that I had seen when you, they would have small groups of people and then Mickey and Minnie would do a little song and, you know, dance or whatever, but that didn't happen. And I kind of suspect it was probably because they're boarding more people on the ship than maybe they were when those people were on the ship that recorded the vlogs. (laughs) So um, that was a little bit of a disappointment not to get to see that. It was. I think it was just what it was. You know, they were just probably trying to get more people yeah. on the ship than than what they had been doing okay. previously. So, one thing that we did do that I didn't mention yet was they have a midship detective agency on board, and it's kind of like we only we didn't play it much at the parks. Was the card was the card game at the parks that they discontinued the. Um, <laughs> The midship detective agency, they had desks on two different levels or two different decks of the ship and it would play a little video and you could either do, they had a Muppets one, which was more complicated. And then they had 
one with uh, Mickey and Minnie, um, and it, they either had a Pirates one or like the case of the missing puppies. And it had a map and told you where to go, and you would stand there and then hold up the card, and the card had like a little code on the back, one of those black and white, not a QR code, but maybe it's still called a QR code. I'm not yeah. sure, but you held it up there, and it would, you know, recognize you, and then it would give you a clue, and you would have to figure out like who stole the puppies or who stole the artwork or whatever. And James like totally loved that. And it was also a great way, like I was saying, all the artwork on the ship to get to see mm -hmm. the stairwell artwork and everything. Cause these were pictures obviously that were moving that were, that were there, uh, which were neat to see, even if you weren't doing the midship detective agency, but that's something that I would definitely say, take advantage of doing um, for kids or adults, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know how much, even on our G3, the, scavengers hunts we do people have given us great feedback of those but sorcerers of magic kingdom wasn't it called right 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 that's yeah. right yeah there yeah 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 oh, that's and fantastic. we also did for the first time they do have the um pirate pirate league is is going again at okay. magic kingdom too so we yeah. did get to do that too so coming off of the midship detective agency seeing how much james enjoyed that we had some time before we had some uh yeah. lightning lanes booked and so we did some of the some of the pirate league and he really en enjoyed getting to do that. So that's something that we'll definitely go yeah, back to. Yeah. Tell everybody what that again. is. That's, that's kind of hidden. I don't think a lot of people know that it's even there, Jamie. I mean, you'll be playing it and there's people sitting around. They don't even know what's going on with all the little. Right. Right. That, yeah. People were standing in front of the places that we need to be. Yeah. So it's between pirates of the Caribbean and splash mountain. There's like a little building and then there's some seating and it says pirates league. And I think it's only open until maybe like six o'clock every day, but mm -hmm use your magic band and there's a plate or even a card. They had cards because James is for some reason wasn't working the second game we played, but they give you a map and a mission and you have to go to each spot and get another clue of where to go next. And it's things that you've seen sitting there all the time that you didn't know could change. So one of them was between like the Tiki room and the Aloha Isle. There's like a clam shell that opens up and shows a pearl and it tells you something. And, statues you know they'll open up and talk so it was it was neat james really enjoyed it and mm. so that's that's something we would we would do again it's a good it's, it's a good thing for sure if you've been to the parks before and you kind of have have some time to do it so did you get a prize we enjoyed it we didn't maybe we didn't complete enough to get a prize i'm not <laughs> sure if they they do a prize for that they used to do fast passes <laughs> for pirates of the caribbean was one oh, okay yeah i think i remember experience. hearing about that before yeah yeah, yeah. I did get a pin of the Midship Detective Agency badge as one of our, oh, nice. I think the only souvenirs I got were two pins. <laughs> so. Excellent. Oh, okay. <laughs> and well, some fantastic. cups that James got in the restaurant. <laughs> so is there a moment, Think can you think of one moment that everyone would say is something that's going to stick with you from this trip? Uh, I mean, I feel like those balcony times that we had in the morning, kind of getting to watch the sunrise and, and right. sitting out there together and thinking about, you know, the day that we had before, yeah. those were, those were just yeah. super special moments for us, for sure. Good so, answer. Those. Good answer. <laughs> uh, this was a fantastic cruise trip report. I'm so happy. Thank you. I reached I'm, out I'm glad, to you. I'm glad to be on here. Yeah. <laughs> Always oh, yeah. like talking about Disney. So. <laughs> <laughs> My Southern gals who love to talk. Oh, and about Disney. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, thanks for being such a, a great member of our geek and family. And I know we will see you again in the parks, hopefully soon. Absolutely. I look forward to it. Or on a Zoom call or something. So tell <laughs> Tell James I was happy to see him tonight, and I'm so glad he had a awesome trip. I will. Thanks. Take care. You too. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. How about the details Jamie went into on the food and all she did on this trip? I mean, just fantastic, Jamie. Well done, our Disney geeks. Are, they're just the best. How about that intro from Samantha Kuhn, Noreen Van Doren, Jen Monahan Wynn, Lauren Hawkins, Jen Pulliam, Rebecca Rudin, Selena Roll, Jackie Cole, and Cantina Ina. Closing the park at Oga's. That sounds like a lot of fun. I love those events when you close down the parks, but I didn't know you could do it with Oga's. It's something I've learned recently. 
And there's always something new to learn about Disney World. Great intro, guys. I'd love to get your intros. Just email them to me at kurt.stone at geekin on www.com. They're fun to create. I can suggest us tell us your name or a bunch of you all hanging out together in the parks, where you're from, some fun Disney World facts about yourself. You go geeking on Walt Disney World with Curtis and the whole geeking family. Thanks so much, Samantha, for messaging that into me. I want to do a shout out for Amanda Held. She did a really cool thing for a good friend of mine, Simple Joe from the Simple Joe podcast, Joe Taylor. His grandson was having one of those flat Stanley school project. And Amanda, I know, lives close to the parks. And she printed that off for Joe and took pictures of it in Epcot and over at the Polynesian, too, having a dole with. So thanks for bringing flat Stanley Amanda over to Walt Disney World for Joe. He really appreciated that. And I think it's so great to have so many friends that we can count on for little fun things like that. And as always, I want to thank my Patreon supporters. Patreon.com is where you can pledge a monthly donation to this show. I really appreciate you guys that do that. Look for Geekin' on WDW on Patreon.com and make a monthly pledge or even an annual pledge. And I've got some episodes that I call the Inner Circle, bonus podcast episodes that I've been releasing from my G3 live recordings. Except for this week, I put one out that was a special call I did with... Some of my listeners who aspire to be podcasters, Johnny Jamerson, he's already got a podcast and a couple of my other friends talking about podcasting and how I got started, some tips from me. So if you want to hear that inner circle recording, I just put that out this weekend and I got some more recordings left of the G3, not too many, but no worries. We're going back to Disney World June 4th through the 13th. So if you're going to be in the parks, please message me. Let me know you're going to be there. Or just surprise me when I'm in the parks. Mom, Judy, Ken and I were going for Judy and Ken's 50th wedding anniversary, staying at Bay Lake Tower and the Riviera. So if you're staying in those resorts, definitely let us know. I'd love to see you guys when we're down in the parks. And of course, email Judy and Mom at TravelinTiers at gmail.com if you're ready to book a trip. Because we are committed to helping you enjoy your Disney World vacations. Again, reach out to us if you'd like to book a trip. Do a trip report or review your plans for your trips. Kurt.Stone at Geekin on WDW.com is my email. And I hope you had an awesome Mother's Day, all you moms out there. And thanks for going geeking on Walt Disney World with us. We really appreciate you listening and geeking with us every single day. We love you, geeks. Have a magical day. And I hope all your dreams come true. fantastic well thank you hopefully i didn't talk too much Such, <laughs> yeah someone said that to me I'm like it is a podcast i mean you're supposed to talk right it'd be really hard if i couldn't you know some interviewers yeah. you'll, you'll see someone yeah. interviewing somebody uh-huh. on whatever on television and recently i was watching and like they give like yes and no answers the poor interviewer mm-hmm. like <laughs> and drag something interesting out of them that was yeah but you might have broke a food record there. I mean, you were, oh, you're were you in the running. You're in the top five there. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I'm telling you, we were we were I, full. I, did, <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't know you were going to hit the be one of the top five food uh, reviewers. That was good. Well, I wish I could describe things like as good as Glenn.